this one here is where the USSR is uh, going up against the USA in attempts to make it to space, utilizing satellite missions and crew missions, as well as attempting to sabotage each other, choosing your scientists to go to the locations they need to go. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is One Small Step by Academy Games. It plays two or four players in teams of one or two, and it takes about 60 to 90 minutes and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game One Small Step, you are competing in the space race. You'll be playing as either the USA or the USSR in attempts to get your global space station set up and travel to the moon. You will be gathering your researchers and designing spacecraft and attempting to gather victory points as you move along in this worker placed game. You're going to be assigning your workers and gathering resources, attempting to utilize them for missions, and of course stopping your opponents from doing their own. You'll be sabotaging them and helping yourself, and if you're able to reach the moon before any other player and gather the most points, you will win the game in one small step. Let's take a look down below, I'll show you what the game comes with, how to play, and then I'll tell you my review. Welcome to One Small Step by Academy Games, and this is set up for the two or four player game, because in this game you're playing on teams when you play with four players, or you're playing by yourself against an opponent in a two player game. You'll either be playing as the USSR, or you'll be playing as the United States forces. Every single player is going to get a starting set of missions for their T-2 and T-1 spots, and you can tell the difference with the key logos on here, and just place them down. They're randomly assigned for both of the different um, countries. You're also going to be getting a set of these cards here that are specific to what team you choose, and these are going to be more challenging missions that you can attempt to try to do throughout the game. Both sets will get one. Uh, you're going to also go ahead and place out four events down here from the event deck, and the event deck is set up with the ones, the twos, and then the threes, and then place down here. Uh, you're also then going to go ahead and place all of the hazards here. These are going to be additional missions. Over here are advancements for the more advanced version of play. Set the stacks of these guys here on the spaces. Uh, these are bonuses you can get throughout the game. And go ahead and place these tokens over here. You can see them represented by the little logos here for each of the different teams, each of the different worker placement spaces. Set these seven victory points here by where the moon is, and go ahead and place any of these randomly face down and set the rest aside. Place out your resources here. There's two different types of resources. You have the white ones, which are used once you use them, and the black ones, which are exhausted when you use them, but they do refresh throughout the game. Then go ahead and give the USA a zero on the media and the USSR a one and place everybody's victory points at zero here on this victory point track and you're ready to begin the game and the game takes place over a series of rounds and a series of things you do and there's seven different things you do during the sequence of play the first thing is a countdown and how the countdown works is pretty simple you'll take all of your cards and move them down towards the launch on your mission area here and that'll allow you to actually do the missions when they're on the launch Launch area. You'll have multiple cards sometimes in each of these different areas, but you'll be keeping track of them at the beginning of the round, knowing what you need to gather in order to accomplish these missions. After you've done that, you can refresh the resources you have. Any black resources you have um, that are on the red side, you're going to go ahead and flip over, and you'll be able to utilize those during this round of play. That's not going to happen during the first round of the game. You'll also go ahead and refresh these guys here, all these events here, whether they be personnel or events. Uh, you're going to go ahead and take those and put new ones out. Also during the first round, you don't need to do that. Then you will be drawing two cards and you can choose between drawing missions or events, uh, satellite slash crew cards. Uh, these are the two different decks you'll be drawing from during this time. And uh, if you draw one of the missions, you'll take it and place it in your T minus two spot or basically the farthest along on the left hand side. And if you take one of these guys here, you'll put them in your hand. These can be valuable uh, by spending the resources and utilizing them throughout the game. They'll give you specific things. 
workers. And there's also personnel that look like this that will allow you to place your workers down specifically for just you throughout the game. After that, you'll move on to the worker phase of the game. During the worker phase of the game, you can place your workers back and forth as teams go. Uh, and there's two different types of workers. You have like the scientists and you have like the comms guys. And they have specific spaces that you can place them on. So if it was red going first, he could place any of his guys on these spaces here or on the cards presented down here. And they all have a requirement, what type of scientist or researcher needs to be placed there, as well as whether these cards are still there or not, because they're going to refresh every round. So in this case here, I could take this guy, I look at the board here, he's got the little uh, head jack, and I can place it, oh, I don't know, on either this space here, or I can place it on a space like this one here. Each of them do something different. Usually they involve giving you resources, or you can spend two equal resources of a specific type to gain a black one, which will let you utilize it throughout the rest of the game. Others will let you spend resources to gather cards, or just simply gain an instant resource. It just depends on what you're gonna be placing them on and how they function. The next thing you'll do is you will place personnel tokens or personnel cards. And this is an optional phase. These are the personnel cards that you'll get from the event deck. And when you place them out, they're basically like worker placement spaces. They don't have a cost to them. You can put them out and then you will be able to utilize them throughout the game, similar to spaces like this during the worker placement phase. After that, you will then play cards. You can play up to two cards. Typically speaking, they'll be the event cards. Each event card is going to have a cost on it in the top right hand side here, and then it will give you a benefit here. And these are very useful to play because they will help you out throughout the game. After you play cards, then you're going to launch. You're going to launch all cards in the launch space on your player board. There's a minor and a major mission, basically. Uh, they will have a cost to them. They will grant you a benefit. You can attempt to just do the basic or try to do the more advanced version of the card. And of course, they will give you better benefits if you do choose to do so. And those will increase your resources. They'll give you media. They will give you the ability to move around this board here, attempting to gather victory points or certain unique things you'll get on the back of these little, uh, these little spaceship tokens here. Sometimes they'll give you these tokens here, which will give you a benefit. Oh, you get one of these tokens and two media, or you get, uh, I don't know, this one here will let you spend one of these tokens to draw a uh, hazard card and place it on an opponent's mission. These are hazard cards. When you take these, you'll place them on opponent's missions, making them a little more challenging for them throughout the game. The advanced version of the game will come with these guys here that you can utilize, as well as the ability to change up the different types of actions that you can take. You can kind of advance them. And if you want, you can use the more advanced version of the game by taking this board off, and as you can see, there's more spaces that present new and interesting challenges. After a number of rounds are completed, you'll check your victory points that you have gained throughout the game, as well as any that you are going to gain at the end of the game, and whoever is farthest along on this track is the winner. Another thing to note, too, is that this media track here, this media track will determine initiative. Whoever is farthest along in initiative is the one who is going to be initiating any ties that might need to be taken place, or if you need to go first. However, if you want, whenever you're in a certain area on the media track here, you can spend five and you will gain a benefit for doing so. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. I didn't go into a huge amount of detail because there's a lot of stuff that you can do. There's a lot of costs and actions that are gonna come out throughout the game, personnel that you can use, events you can use, and of course, the different types of hazards and cards you're going to see as you go throughout the game. There's going to be new and interesting events that get more, uh, more challenging, that give you a better reward, that have a higher cost. And of course, there's the advancements, which is an advanced player game. The two player game is how I, what I explained mainly, but the four player game is played very similarly, except for the fact that you're playing with somebody else and you just kind of work together, utilizing the cards that you have with some unique little variations. And that's it. That is one small step. Let's come up and discuss the game. And I'll tell you what I think about it and whether you should pick up this unique worker placement game. So Academy Games likes to do historical based games for the most part, except for Agents of Mayhem, but otherwise, yeah, they do a lot of historical based games. This one here is where the USSR is uh, going up against the USA in attempts to make it to space, utilizing satellite missions and crew missions, as well as attempting to sabotage each other, choosing your scientists to go to the locations they need to go. Now, this game is filled with theme. You are constantly trying to improve yourself, utilizing your resources to turn them into resources that stick throughout the game because those black resources 
resources are way more vital than the basic resources that you get. Another thing to note too is moving of course the spacecraft along, gathering those victory points is super important and you can get a ton of points by utilizing that as well. Advancing the specific actions that you can take in the game is nice. The fact that it has a basic mode to the game which is what I strongly recommend you start with because the game is more challenging. It's not typically for younger players in my opinion. I think it it hit the nail on the head as far as it's a 12 and up. It might be even just a little higher because it's it's got some some weight to it. Um, but when you're playing yeah, the advanced version of the game, you're going to be uh, having to make a lot of tough decisions. And of course, there's limited spaces that you can go on as you play on teams. You're going to have to make decisions together that you normally probably wouldn't have made on your own, but that might be helpful. Maybe, maybe not. And of course, you're also going to be having to sabotage your opponents, placing those cards specifically on the unique uh, different satellite missions they're going to try and accomplish. Attempting to accomplish the minor missions comparatively to the major ones is going to be a different challenge as to what you should try to do. What is your resources? What, what, where is your resources going to give you the most benefit in the game? And there's a lot of decision making that you're going to have to make. There's a ton of different cards. There's a setup that kind of makes the game start off a little simpler and allows you to kind of gather resources to make it more challenging as you go on. You can also choose to kind of increase the difficulty on your own throughout the game by placing out your own specific specific missions here. These are like your, your own specific crew missions. And these are, these are challenging ones, uh, for sure. So I would strongly recommend you use them when you know that you can accomplish them because you don't want to fail missions in this game. Uh, there's also the die, which you'll be rolling constantly throughout the game to gather those resources. There's a ton of different resources and they're placed in the different sections on the board. Speaking of the board, high, high quality. This thing is really, really nice. Each of the little spots plays a role as to where you're going to be placing your advancements, your crew missions, your personnel, your different resources, what your launch pad looks like, what is coming up in the uh, in the past, uh, not in the past, what's coming up in the future with your T-2, T-1 launch. So you can kind of gauge, I need to have this specific resource in two rounds, and if I don't, I'm not gonna accomplish this mission, or I'll have to use an expendable resource that I could have turned into something that's going to be more viable. So you kind of want to weigh those options, and sometimes you have to make those harsh decisions where you don't actually get to use the resources for what you want, because you need to use them for what you need. Uh, this game here has beautiful artwork, and the, the theme is surrounded in this game. You feel like you are uh, sending your scientists out, you feel like you're gathering personnel, and you're placing different missions down and trying to accomplish them and that your opponents are kind of messing with you. They're not really against you necessarily, they're just trying to get there first. But if they need to sabotage something here or there, or place a worker on a space that you need to prevent you from getting the resources that you need, they will do that. And it's going to be one of those things where you're going to probably get upset. <laughs> uh, overall, the game is an excellent game. It is a worker placement though. It's heavy. It's something that you're going to have to be able to sit down and go throughout the rules. There's a lot of little things I didn't talk about. Uh, I just gave you the brief overview of how the game is played and you're going to need to go in and specifically look at the references and whatnot. Luckily this rulebook does an excellent job of explaining all the different symbols and their references and once you see them you'll understand how they work and of course it's going to have all the different phases of play illustrated with designer notes, really really well done rulebook uh, that gives you a ton of extra stuff too, specifically like the history of the uh, the, the space race and what it, it required in order to go ahead and do so. This, this just the feel, feeling of this game made me kind of uh, envision how actually intense this must have been for the scientists and all the people in the government working to get this uh, space race up and uh, not only that specifically personally, but having to deal with other countries attempting to get there before them because it was a huge prestigious thing to be able to get to the moon. I just, I, I'm enamored with Academy Games when it comes to a lot of their historical based games. I think they do a really good job of that and give you a little bit of history along with something that's really enjoyable. Uh, some people probably might say this is a, a little more on the drier side just because of uh, there's a lot of different like things you have to do throughout the game. Uh, I mean, personally, I didn't find it that way, but but my, my friend who was playing with me was like, yeah, it's a little dry for me. So I wanted to point out that specific negative critique, but I guess I was just so enamored by the history and what it felt like to go ahead and go throughout all these different missions and whatnot and how they're all attached to the history. Each card has something that is based off of the space race. I think it does a good job of that. And um, it, it, it has a lot of symbols and whatnot. So you're going to have to you have to play through the first game and kind of go in there a little blind as you're playing it or specifically 
have somebody go deeply into the rules, but that player is most likely going to win because they'll have more knowledge. Regardless though, I had a really good time with this game. High quality, great artwork, amazing historical theme with a crunchy, deep, thick gameplay that I really, really enjoyed. If you're interested in a game like this, I strongly recommend you check out the link down below in the description and you can go ahead and pick up this game, One Small Step by Academy Games. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and go ahead and hit that bell notification button. It greatly helps us and we do really, really appreciate it. You can also go ahead and check out the game One Small Step by Academy Games. Wonderful historical games there and of course their website. Link down below in the description if you're interested. Uh, we can also go ahead and show you our live stream every Wednesday 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games similar to this one. This one's a little more crunchy and more like heavy than we normally play but games similar to games we review every Wednesday 6.30 p.m. Don't forget Join us, we give away games, we have a ton of fun, we have a great community on there, and of course our Discord. If you're interested in doing a Patreon for us, we appreciate it, it's helping us uh, continue doing the work we do here, as well as putting out more games and giving more games away on our website. Speaking of our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, reviews, top five videos, all kinds of good stuff on there that you can join up and uh, join our ma mailing list. Uh, Moonshell, a mermaid game, my wife's game, is coming out next year, sometime in February, and if you're interested in taking a look at that puzzle game with uh, some interesting little concepts to it, I strongly suggest you head to moonshowgame.com. That's all I got for you guys this time. And as always, I look forward to racing into space with you next time.